In this video, we're going to learn about some of the different ways and places that we can call void functions in C. So this video is really just for fun. I don't really recommend using any of the techniques discussed in this video because they're either not useful or they're generally considered to be bad style. So when calling functions that return a value, we typically use the return value in some kind of expression, even if all we're doing is assigning the return value to a variable. So up here, let's define a function called test. And this function is going to return an int value. And all we'll do is just return one. Then down here, we could call test. And we could assign the return value to a variable called value of type int. Then we could output value using printf. So here we'll call printf and we'll pass it a string with percent %d to output an int value followed by backslash n for new line and we'll output value. Then if we save, compile and run the program, we'll get one here. Now we could use the value returned by test in all kinds of ways. So for example, I could add five to the value returned by test and then store the result of the sum into value. And now if I save, compile and run the program, we'll get six here. Now I could also just call the function and not do anything with the value. So I could just call test and do nothing with the return value. And this is also valid. We'll delete this call to printf. And if we save, compile and run the program, it's going to work. Now with a void function that doesn't return a value, seemingly all we can do is call the function like this. So let's declare a void function now. We'll have here void function one. So this function is not going to return a value. And all we'll do is output here, output one followed by a new line. Then down here, we'll call function one. And this will work. If we save compile and run the program, we'll get output one. But with a call to avoid function like this, there's no value returned that we can somehow use in some kind of expression. So for example, we can't declare a void variable called value and assign the return value to value because there is no return value. We can't even declare a variable of type void. If we try to save, compile and run this, we'll get an error. It says here variable has an incomplete type void. So we can't do this. So seemingly this here is the only way we can call function one. But there actually are other ways and places that we can call void functions. It's just they're either not useful or they're generally considered to be bad practice. So for example, one simple thing we could do is just surround this function call with brackets. We could have an open bracket here and a closed bracket here. And if we save, compile and run the program, we'll get here output one. And these brackets do nothing, but we can do this. We could also typecast the result of calling the function to void. So here we could have a typecast to void. And again, this will do nothing, but if we save, compile and run the program, it's going to work and we'll get output one. So this is legal. We can also call void functions inside a ternary operator. So let's make a second void function. We'll call this function function two, and this function will output output two. So we'll have printf and we'll output here output two followed by a new line. Then down here, we'll have a ternary operator We'll have here, one is equal to one as a condition, then question mark, function one, colon, function two. So this here is a ternary operator where first this condition is going to be evaluated. And if this condition is true, then this expression here is going to be evaluated. But if this condition is false, then this expression here is going to be evaluated. Now, typically when using the ternary operator, this expression here and this expression here are both going to produce values when they're evaluated. And the result of this expression as a whole is going to be the result of whichever expression was evaluated. Whereas here, all we do is call void functions in each expression. So this expression as a whole is not going to produce a value that we could somehow use as part of some larger expression. Now, if we do try this out, we have a true condition here. So this function one here should run. If we save, compile and run the program, we do get output one here. Whereas if we had a false condition, like one is equal to two, now if we save, compile and run the program, we'll get output two. So we can do this legally. Now we can also call void functions in the return statement of other void functions. So void functions actually can have return statements. For example, here we could have return semicolon. And what this will do is stop the execution of this function here. So here, for example, when we call function two, we're not going to output output two. If we save, compile and run the program, we'll get here no output. Now, one thing we could do is call function one here. 
so we could have return function one. And this will actually work. If we save, compile, and run the program, when function two runs, it calls function one at that return statement, and we get output one. We can also call void functions when using the com operator. Let's delete this line here. Then we'll have function one, and we'll have comma function two. So the way the com operator works is that these expressions here are going to be evaluated in order from left to right. And the result of this expression as a whole is going to be the result of this last expression here. And here, all we have is void function calls. So if we save, compile, and run the program, we'll just get output one followed by output two, and that's it. Now, one thing we could do is have our void function calls manipulate some kind of global variable, for example. So for example, we could declare a global variable of type int called number. Then we'll create a void function called setup. And this setup function is going to set number to zero. Then we'll also declare a void function called increment. And this function is going to increment number by one with number plus plus. Then down here, we could use the comma operator to call setup followed by increment twice. So we'll call setup, then we'll call increment, then we'll call increment, then we'll have as the last expression, just number here. So what this will do is call the setup function, which is going to initialize number to zero. Then we'll call increment, which is going to increment that number by one. And then we call increment again. So number should now be two. Then as the last expression, we just have number. That means the result of this expression as a whole should be two, which we could store into an int variable called value. So we'll have int value is equal to the result of this expression. And we actually have to have these brackets here because if we didn't, the issue is the assignment operator actually has a higher precedence than the com operator. So with this code as it's written, we would try to first assign the return value of calling setup to value, but setup is a void function. So we put these brackets around the expression. That way, the result of this expression number is assigned to value. Then we could output value using printf. So here we'll call printf, we'll have printf, and we'll pass it the string value colon, and then percent D for an int value and backslash N for a new line, and we'll output value here. Then if we save compile and run the program, we do get that value is two. And finally, we can also call void functions in the initialization and update statements of a for loop. So for example, a typical for loop might look like this. We could have here for int number is equal to zero to declare a counter variable number and initialize it to zero. Then we could have the condition number is less than five. Then with each loop iteration, we could increment number by one with number plus plus. And we can call this statement here, the initialization statement, and this statement here, the update statement. Typically this statement will initialize some counter variable and typically this statement will update it. What we could do though is call void functions here instead. So maybe instead we'll use our global variable number. We'll call setup here to set the variable number to zero. Then here we'll call increment to increment number by one. And this will work. In the for loop body, we could open number. We'll call printf and we'll pass it the string number colon with percent D to output an int followed by backslash n for a new line and we'll output number with each loop iteration. And then if we save compile and run the program, we can see our loop is working as number goes from zero to four by one with each iteration of the loop. So these are the ways that I'm aware of that we can call void functions. And like I said, this video is really just for fun because in general, to my knowledge, these examples would be considered either not useful or not good practice. But if you know another way we can call void functions, or if you know how one of these techniques would be considered a good practice, please leave a comment. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.